Good morning, beautiful wintry La Land. It's time for me to get up and move the Christmas tree, which is now completely bare, out of the house. Hello. Hello. Sometimes I find that coming into the kitchen when you're cooking is like stepping back in time. Well, you cast iron pot on a cast on a iron wood frying pan on a on a wood fired range cooker. And your kettle as well. And the kettle, yes. Mm. So I'm just about to make some scrambled egg. Would you like some? Well, of course I'd like some. Have I ever said no to scrambled egg? Never. Have I ever said no to food? Never. <laughs> <laughs> some might wonder if your pan's almost a bit too small. No, it's perfect. You say so? Scrambled egg. Oh. Okay. There you go, scrambled egg the old fashioned way. Well, this is the best way to start the day. All steaming scrambled eggs. Oh, bye bye tree, you were a magnificent tree, you made us really happy. Oh. Manny, I can't even see you. Hi. Hi. I can't see. Okay, we all go downstairs, we're doing it this way. But there's molehills this way. But you're already burning it. Well, tree, you're going out in a blaze of glory. The sheep don't seem very concerned about the end of Christmas. I'm about to move on to the next big project in the house, which is decorating this room, which as you can see, needs new furniture and a lot of redecoration. This is the very last major window in the chateau to have its curtains made. This is a lovely 18th century alcove. I think it will look very, very pretty when it's all curtained and there's new 18th century furniture, <laughs> new old furniture. And we're keeping the wallpaper because it's a hand-blocked wallpaper, which is about a hundred years old. This room is clearly not acceptable in its current state. And I'm going to go and buy the fabric to make the windows. I need at least 20 metres just for one window, which tells you just how much fabric the curtains at Lalande take. And it's the last main window of the house to do. I've made over 100 curtain drops, so I'm quite excited that the end is in sight. That's so hard. I'm lucky they've got so much. I just realised. I need more than 20 metres because I've forgotten the bed curtains in that room. I want to make huge curtains in the bed alcove. So we'll need 9 metres just for the alcove. For one bedroom, and this is just 27 metres of the top fabric, it means I need 27 metres of interlining and 27 metres of lining as well. So any small thing we want to do, like curtaining one window and a matching alcove, turns into a huge financial operation and masses of hours of work which is why it's taken so long to get to where we are now, but I think it's really worth it. The final choice of the curtain fabrics. As you can see, I had a really beautiful matching curtain fabric for the windows, but there's very little left because they've shrunk over time. I just have two small drops, enough to cut out some panels and have that as an edging. And then I've chosen this creamy yellow as the main curtain fabric and a little bit of green to use in the reveals of the swags and tails. And I think together, against the wallpaper, they're going to look very, very pretty. It's going to be a lovely view from the window. And finally, these curtains are finished. Well, I'm really excited because we're actually leaving the chateau. It doesn't happen very often. It does not happen <laughs> often at all. We're going on a family outing to the cinema to see the new Mary Poppins. Are we excited in the back? You excited Yay! to see Mary Poppins? Very excited. <laughs> And after Mary Poppins, we're going to, where are we going? All inclusive! Chinese buffet! In the Chinese restaurant. And there are all you can drink drinks. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> Straight from Hong Kong, this tip. From Mary, you turn the paper sleeve into the chopstick rest. 
a life-changing moment. Yes, you've got sushi. Oh, Look at that. How that's what that I look? miss when I'm not in London. This is fantastic. It's really good. Yeah. What have you chosen, Mabby? Sushi and seaweed. Oh, entire fish. Yes. It's amazing, don't you think so? As you can see, the Chinese takeaway has closed and we are the last people to leave. Typical. It's the Booking.com Guest Review Awards 2018. Ooh. I'm quite nervous. Ooh. I can't even open it. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> Aha. Uh <-huh. laughs> yes! We got nine! We got nine! Yes! Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten, that is really good. Oh, we've done well. I'm so proud of everyone. Are you chuffed? So chuffed. So chuffed of the whole team here. I think we need a little celebration tonight. So we've come to the uh, local hair suppliers for salon I'm products. I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. Don't be nervous. Trust me. Okay, let's so go. So we need to go and get some stuff. So Stephanie, you normally go to London to get your hair done, but I'm going to do it from now on. You realise this is quite scary for me. I've been doing hair for about 14 years now, so I know what I'm doing. We've got everything we need. So we have bleach, developer. Which world, I don't know what you're talking about, it's amazing. I'm just quite scared and excited to see my hair afterwards. Yes. Yeah, that's definitely between a 9.03 and a 10.03, I think. 903 and 1003, it's gobbledygook. I, I have no idea what he's talking about. I just know, you know what you're doing, right? Yeah, I know, yeah. I promise. I promise I know. <laughs> do you like quite a golden tone? Mm, I do. Yes. How so, do you know all of this just by looking at my hair? You're not even using a colour chart. Experience. So I think 903 and a 1003. Okay, I'm taking your word for it. Well, they also have these mixing tones that you can put with colours and they're for colour correction. So say that if somebody's hair's gone orange, you use blue. Colours that are opposite each other on a colour wheel neutralise each other. So if, say, it's green, you need to find the colour that's opposite that, so you put a red with it. It just works like that. So, so you, can, you can add a little bit of these to your normal colour mm. to, to correct a tone. To correct if there's a problem. So what you're saying is that if we mess up, there's a cure. If you mess up, there's a cure, but I won't mess up. <laughs> <laughs> it really needs it. My roots are really bad. And for what you spend here, it's still going to be cheaper than going to London and getting it done. Yeah, it is. And all of this stuff is going to last you at least 10 goes, so you're going to save a fortune. Okay, let's do this. You just need me. <laughs> I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be brave. I'm making a spaghetti bolognese. I think that looks like some nice basil, do you? Mm. Yeah, of I've course. I've got a lot of basil in it. What about cherry tomatoes made into a sauce? Oh, that sounds delicious. Black cherry tomato sauce yes. mixed with normal tomatoes. Yes. Look at these, they're beautiful. They'll make an amazing sauce. One thing that I always do, which is a really good tip if you like to grow tomatoes, is come to somewhere like Bonfre, which do heritage tomatoes. In. Pick the ones that I like from here, I'll take them home, I get the seeds out, dry them, and then I'll plant those seeds in the late winter in the greenhouse. You don't have to buy expensive seeds, just buy the tomatoes. So I'm sure by this stage it's not going to surprise anyone to know that Michael's insisting on making the tomato sauce himself and not buying anything tinned. A tin? How dare you? All right, young lady, give me some ours. Two quid a pound. <laughs> you missed your, your calling in there. Hello. Such a great apron. You like it? Makes everyone in the kitchen happy, that apron. So seeing as you've got nine out of ten on booking.com, I think it's about right that we have a celebratory meal. Yes. So I'm going to cook my famous spaghetti bolognese, all from scratch, no tin tomatoes, anything. I make all of the sauce from fresh tomatoes. It's going to taste lovely. Oh, yum. These onions are about to make me cry, so you might have to stop. <laughs> oh, has something sad happened? Yeah, it's very, very sad news. Um, I just had to uh, cut up an onion. <laughs> It's always very uh, emotional. I shouldn't be laughing. And they have to go. It's quite funny. You see, real men have emotions. <laughs> <laughs> when onions are around. Oh, onions, they get me every time. 
I think that the Mary Poppins trip must have pleased Michael quite a lot because he's cooking the spaghetti bolognese listening to the soundtrack. Come and see. because we have booked to go to Venice in February to celebrate the fact the season's at an end, it went really well, and we're going to relax just before everything starts again in March. This is what we're going to be drinking every night in Venice. Is this quite an Italian thing then, Stephanie? Yes. Aperol spritz? Yes. So you better get used to this. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. To Venice. To Venice. The famous bolognese is now done, but I think I am most excited about the garlic bread. Yep, definitely most excited about that. Homemade sauce, there's no, no tin tomatoes or sauces, it's all from scratch. Did you put those pretty basil leaves on top? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. What is this lovely noise I'm hearing? This is the noise of popcorn. <gasps> Cinema night. Can't hear any pops yet. Oh. <laughs> Something's happening in there. Mm, can I try? I'm so good at making popcorn. Right, perfect. Let's take this straight up to the new cinema room. The day has arrived when Michael's going to do my hair. It's much needed but still wondering what am I going to look like this afternoon? My bathroom has been transformed into a salon. I think I'm most excited about the little coffee table. You're making it look professional, I'll give you that. <laughs> making it look professional. <laughs> you sound confident, don't you? I'm scared that you're bored now. This is it. This, yeah, I'm this bored is now. Me, it's done. Me done. I'll just leave that bit and um, someone else can do it. We're being a bit naughty. Sided Having a good cat. Life is pretty good right now. Last night we watched Barbarella. Michael's choice. That was um, interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's made me feel a little bit dissatisfied with my wardrobe and my hair. You think I'm looking very Jane Fonda right now? Yeah, very Jane Fonda. Mm. No one never saw her eating Kit Kats. So, so far, Michael's managed to make my hair almost disappear. Will it come back? It's questionable at the moment. Very little hair left, it seems. <laughs> so, Stephanie, I hear you'd like some glossing hold. Uh, I would love some glossing hold. But... Okay. Slap. <laughs> People don't use enough mousse these days. This seems a little old school. We're going retro today. Mm. I think I'm lucky that I didn't have a swimming cap on my head with stuff being pulled through. <laughs> I have hair again! Hurrah! Hurrah! And it's a really beautiful colour. You genius. Do you like it? Yes, so much. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. You're so clever. How can you do everything? I don't know. 